Welcome to Nourishing the Mother, where inspired women talk about the journey of motherhood through the common thread of parenting, relationship, and sexuality as a path to consciousness. We ask, in what ways can we show up more fully, live more meaningfully, parent more wholly, and love more unconditionally? How can we mine the wisdom from the experiences of our lives and expand into those challenges? If you are here, you care about paving a path of conscious and intentional motherhood, connected with yourself and your gifts and also illuminating your children in theirs, so we may raise more whole humans who can impact this world in a more humane way. And if you feel like giving a little back to this free content, please become a patron of the show and receive extra member benefits for less than a coffee a month. Or you can leave a review on iTunes and Facebook all of which helps the podcast keep going and reach more mamas who need this type of tonic for the soul. Head on over to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast to find out more. We are Julie Tenner and Bridget Wood, and we are so grateful you're here. Hello and welcome to Nourishing the Mother. I'm Bridget Wood. And I'm Julie Tenner. And today's podcast is all about boundaries as part of respectful parenting. And I don't think we can ever talk about this topic enough, so we're both excited Mm. to have this conversation. Before we do that, I'd love to remind you to jump on to nourishingthemother.com.au, scroll on down to the red banner, and come join our newsletter. All you have to do is drop in your email and we will pop up in your inbox, definitely not more than once every three weeks, but I'm working on even three weeks. (laughs) (laughs) We're getting back to it. We're getting back to it. I'm, it's on my list. So if you would love just to have a little bit more of an energetic plug-in and a reminder that is something beautiful and offers you the opportunity to go deeper, then please do that, nourishingthemother.com.au and join our tribe. Mm. So today, Bridgie, boundaries, this was your topic suggestion. Yeah, so yeah, look, I, I've noticed again and again in conversation in our memberships in a recent class that I ran around breastfeeding and Mm. transitions and just in the general more conscious gentle parenting community that sometimes we either we often unconsciously as women will give up our needs or give up even listening to what um, we need in order to make sure our child's okay or in order to make sure that our child is feeling seen and heard and loved and in that process, we don't always recognise the need for them to, for us also to have boundaries around how much of our bodies perhaps that we give to our child in the case of breastfeeding. Um, and also in the broader environment, how much we um, negate the importance of boundaries in terms of helping our children understand respectful behaviour and respectful communication. Because if you have a story of, not feeling seen or heard or your own identity being quashed, you will want to let your child flower. But sometimes your child's flowering might impact another child or another person in a way that is um, disrespectful and that if you don't have a boundary that helps your child relate with the world and with you in a way that you would like to be related to, then they don't have that toolkit. And I think that we see we can see this um more often in in um, more of the wild kind of um, child rearing, and I think that it's important to 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 find that um, what what both our boundaries look like, and both helping our children understand and discern what other people's boundaries look like in a way that is respectful to both that other person and our child being their whole self. So that's sort of where I want to take this conversation because I think it's, it's a good one to keep coming back to. Yeah, how would you how do you teach the discernment of boundaries for self and other with your children? So for me I think it begins so much in both me checking in 
Um, so in terms of self and my child, for me, it's a checking in of how I feel about, for example, my three-year-old trying to climb on me. And if my body is a real no in that moment, it's being really clear. I don't want you to climb on me right now. Can you hop off, please? And physically moving her off. And, you know, because, and then, and of course, there's other times where it feels good and it's playful and it's fine. And my body's saying yes. So that's okay. And in terms of other, it's helping my children often between each other, recognizing what their bodies are saying. So if one child is pushing the other one a bit too far in play, or if the other one is saying something that's hurtful, that's clearly the other child is feeling impacted by, it's helping them see that body language. It's helping them, it's stepping in and saying, I can see that what you said just then really hurt your sister. How do you think you might be able to repair that with her? So I'm not telling him to say, sorry, I'm not punishing, I'm not shaming. I'm asking an opportunity to open to what's here that you might not have noticed. So that's my practice around um, boundaries. And I think that it's, it's my evolution, if I think back to how I would have been raised, it was very much like, this is right, this is wrong, this is good behaviour, this is bad, these are the rules, you know, and so it might be that you're, you know, you never let your child do this. But sometimes your body might say, yeah, that's fine, I'm happy to do it. And other times you might um, be not willing to have your, sorry, be willing to have your child do something and and it's, it's opposite. I guess I th- what rings true in my head a lot with my mum saying that her mum always said, Whatever you're asking to be, just say that up front. Just, you know, if it's a no from the beginning, just never change it. Don't waver, you know, which is that whole, like, you know, order and control. But as humans, we're so much more nuanced than that. And when we're in a relationship with our bodies, which are constantly communicating to our children before our words do, that to me is one of the most authentic teachers is what, what's my body, what's my nervous system saying right now? Where am I at here? How much can I hold here? How much am I willing to enter here? And where is my boundary? And I, mean, I, and I think about um, you, Julie, when you were over one day and Gwen and Sylvie were like making plans for a sleepover and, you know, they were like super excited. And even you said to Gwen, oh, we just had a hard night last night. She doesn't really want to have a sleepover tonight, but maybe another time. You know, and even that is building awareness mm. for your child about, you know, tuning into people's feelings right now and their capacity or their choices and that our choices don't always get to override another person's choices. And so let's look wider about how what we want works for another person or not. I really love that. How do you know in your body your willingness or lack of? For me, it's whether I feel open and and kind of... What does what to feel open look like, feel like? What's the... How does someone who has no idea how to read their body know that, I guess is what I'm asking. There's not a feeling of constriction. There's not a feeling of irritation. So, so for instance, I know when it's a no because even just the feeling of someone climbing on me and touching me, I'm feeling irritated by that. So I'm feeling like I want space. So in that moment, it's definitely a no. And if it's a yes, I'm feeling softer. I'm feeling more malleable. I'm feeling like I'm just willing to be um, opened by another and met by another's body and that I'm not closed. And I mean, I recognise that my body is also a function of my psychology and that I'm constantly influencing that. But I can still give a boundary with my to my child, come back to myself, work on my willingness and come back to them without having to quash what my body's saying in order to immediately meet their needs. Does that make sense? Is that clear? Yeah, it does. No, I love it. So my next question is what do you think about, um, I guess what you already, you just touched on it before, but this concept of confusing our children with fluid boundaries. Yesterday Mm. it was yesterday, it's a no, versus Mm. this is yes and this is no. What do you think about that? So I think that that doesn't recognise that our children feel us anyway. So they feel whether we're open or closed before our words are saying that. And they will 
they feel an incongruence which and they and they sense and know what's a what's a solid rule and a rule that's meaningful and what's an arbitrary rule. So the latter that you were talking about is an arbitrary rule of because I said so or you know, this is our what does rule. Arbitrary mean? I don't even know if I know what that word means. What does that mean? So arbitrary. it's almost like rules for like the sake of having a rule. You know, like okay. we've got this rule and it's kind of like, you know, no one really knows why, but we kind of have this rule. You know, I think rules are made to be yeah. understood and potentially shifted, changed and broken, right? Yeah. And so I love so, that about you too. Yeah, it's, it also has a shadow though, right? Oh, <laughs> like but, everything. Like everything, but I, yeah. I, I really appreciate that quality in you too. I really yeah. love having my perceptions stretched or shifted just by virtue of, of witnessing you in that process. No, oh, thank you. Thanks. It's a, it's a process of, you know, thanks, Dustin. <laughs> um, you said it. Yeah, you know, because... Well, because there's this willingness to just be isolated, isn't there? Because if you're not part yeah. of the sheep, you're outside yeah. of the tribe. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But I guess I also want to choose, I would rather have rules that that are congruent rules which means if they're congruent rules because we are fluid beings it means that they can't always be the same every single day every single moment right because if we're fluid if you think about rules as a construct probably largely of patriarchy and more and all of our masculine right so a masculine mm-hmm. likes to know what to expect it likes something linear it likes logic it likes to see everything but the feminine feels everything and so I think that there is a place for both and I think that 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 like every relationship our bodies in every system every in every layer from the micro to the macro is always asking us to kind of come into flow with what is authentic right now and so if we always had a rule of, of one way one thing all of the time then we miss the potential of, of what it could be if we let go of that rule. And today we're doing this, you know? Mm. So that's kind of where I try to take that lens. I mean, as, as a family, like I, we're back in ISO, obviously we're back in lockdown. And so meeting everyone's needs is a constant conversation mm. framed with what are our family agreements. And their respect for yourself, respect for each other and respect for our environment. And our environment changes wherever we are. So here we're spending a lot of time in the home. So right now it's not okay with me for you to do X, Y, Z because, right? And it might be because today dad and I are trying to really concentrate on doing this. So we can't allow you to do that right now. But you have these other ways in which you can express that. And I'm really okay to flow with sometimes this is okay and yeah. sometimes this is not because they live in a world where they're constantly going to have to adapt. And so if I'm not teaching them to adapt in the home, how are they going to know how to adapt in, in the world, right? Like everything comes back to what I want them to know and feel and understand and how can I bring that here? Mm. So where do you want to take this conversation with boundaries then? So I like to start with, when your baby is really little and you're meeting all of their needs because they need you to meet all of those needs, like you're responding to every cry, you're feeding them when they're hungry, you are um, but you're giving all of yourself to this, this tiny human. And as that tiny human grows, that tiny human is seeking a little bit of independence from you and it's seeking togetherness and separateness. And as it learns that process of, to get, of separateness from you, it also needs to learn that your body is your body and that, and that sometimes maybe when they're, you know, clawing at your top or they're um, trying to climb all over you to have a breastfeed, even though they're not, even though they've had food, that maybe your body's saying no right now and it's really okay for you to say no to your child that you're not willing to breastfeed them and that you'll listen to their frustration in that. And that you'll offer them other ways to have hunger needs met if they're hungry. And if they're not hungry, that you're really willing to listen to them feeling frustrated with you, that you're, that you're not willing to share your body in that moment. That is what I think the beginning of boundaries looks like. For example, with the breastfeeding relationship. And 
and it goes and it and it draws out from there and it begins a consent conversation too because if you're not willing to override your body then you teach them to check in with what their body says and not override their body when someone's asking them to do something that they don't want to do and so your boundaries are a, are a key ingredient in your conscious parenting and that it's okay for your child to be frustrated, upset and angry with you by you having boundaries. You are not harming your child by you having boundaries. Mm. I think that we can sometimes, you know, in this desire to raise conscious children and to be up to date with all of the latest research on the right way to raise children, is that we can, you know, think, oh, I don't want to, like, um, not meet their needs or I, I don't want to, like, um, you know, cause, you know, emotional challenges for them or issues in, my, in the way that they perceive me or the way that they perceive their caregiver. So I'll, I'll kind of contort and, shift and shape shift myself in order to be what they want me to be. But mm. I don't think that that's part of healthy development either. I think that they want you to be you. They want you to be your youest you so they know what that looks like to be true to themselves. And so sometimes your boundary is a beautiful, beautiful thing, even if your child rallies against it. Because sometimes boundaries are the best way to tell your child that you love them. That's what I feel. I feel that too. I think there's a certain amount of safety that's inherent in I will hold you within here. Mm. And that there's a safety in being able to let go within that space because you know it's you know you're not disappearing or that it's it's infinite that it has these this sort of container around it I think that there's safety for children in that children who do not have boundaries do not develop better Mm. it's not how Mm. it works so Mm. I have many many of my friends actually work with troubled teens in various formats and you know vastly what I from what I can observe and dial down it seems to be a lack of boundaries, which is perceived as a lack of caring because it's kind of like, well, whatever, whatever, you know, and it's this um, kind of removal of willingness to meet the other in that because Mm. it's almost like a step back and intimacy requires a step towards even when it looks like conflict or ugliness. Yeah. So the step back ends up being a state of non-care and, um, spiritual starvingness so this sense of a greater connectedness to self and other which I also think is part of the conversation with boundaries so I don't ever look at boundaries as um if they're respectful though I do say because I do think it's very easy to stay reactionary yeah and um I mean when I was in doing the workshop at Soldier for Motherhood on Thursday it was one of the things that came up I think one of the beautiful moms is like having a hard time with um pajamas at the moment getting pajamas on and ultimately we talked around that but I was like you know in the end often I wonder is it really the pajamas like does mm-hmm. it matter or are we like holding on to the meaning that we make pajamas mean you know? Mm, And so I do think the conversation with our own boundaries also needs to be with a witnessing and an awareness of perhaps what you would call arbitrary um, rules, Bridget, which is just, why does it, why does it matter? Why do they have to wear pajamas to go to bed? Yeah. 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 So sometimes my three-year-old will go to a stage a couple of nights of wanting to wear her tights and a t-shirt to bed. Does that affect me? No. Why do I think she has to wear pajamas? I guess because it's just what we do. Is it that important? No. Okay. She can wear what she wants to wear to bed. You know, like yeah, that exactly. self-check-in, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just saying I do think when we're witnessing our own sense of um, needing life to exist in a certain way, that there also needs to be a level of self-responsibility and self-check-in mm. or self-measure around are they reactionary and I need life to be exactly this yeah. way in order for me to feel good, yeah. in which case I would say that's not a growth space. Or is it I have this construct of my boundaries being less about rigid walls that I have to defend and yeah. more about these malleable and moving um, 
uh, ed- I want to say edges, but it's a different word. Like I always think of it like a beautiful sandbank that meets a river or something, mm. that there's this tide that can, it's yeah. like a tide. The boundaries look like tides. As we grow, yeah. our boundaries will shift. Yeah. As our awareness changes, our boundaries will shift. Boundaries are not static. What existed is, no. Yeah, I mean, and boundaries, I mean, as a word, it sounds like a solid wall. But actually, they are far more malleable, and I love that you have made that distinction because it's true. If it's boundaries that are rigid and reactionary, then that is not um, the makings of a great relationship with your children because it's yeah. very, it's very like us and them, you know, like don't step on my turf kind of thing. Whereas it's whereas well, and I think it, back here. Sorry, I was going to interrupt you because I. It's just I also f- feel like because I I work with a lot of people through this and particularly in couples, I notice it is this desire for life to need to exist in exactly the way that our nervous system needs it to exist in order to mean that we don't have to meet our own discomfort. Mm. You know, that there's this way of, well, I need, you know, you to be like this and you to treat me like that and the house to exist in this way. And then I get to feel good Mm. because I don't like not feeling good. Mm. And that to me is a limited um, bandwidth or tolerance um, and a lower IQ, not IQ, EQ. Yeah. It's emotional yeah. intelligence, isn't it? A lowered yeah. emotional intelligence than what it looks like to recognise when you've put yourself in a box and it's very mm. rigid and that this exact situation is orchestrating as such to get you to, to break out of the box that you've put mm. yourself in because that's a cage. Yeah. It might be beautifully gilded and, you know, pristine rainbow glass, but it's still a cage. So mm. what would it look like to not need with such emotional desirousness for mm. the world to exist in exactly this way in order for you to be okay? Because that's the opposite of freedom. Mm. And ultimately what we're all seeking, even when we're in our masculine and seeking black and white is freedom. We're all mm. seeking to feel free, but you only really feel free when you can fully tussle with the experience of chaos in the world mm. as it exists in its feminine form, right? Which is all form. So I know I went a little bit spiritual then, but I was just sitting with just beware that desire to have your pillow fluffed exactly right and your world to exist in exactly these ways because mm. when it doesn't exist in exactly these ways, you're off. Then I go, yeah. okay, you've got emotional intelligence work to do. Yeah. If it is dependent, if your wellness is dependent upon a set of circumstances and ways of being that exist outside of you, you're in a cage. You're not mm. free. So when it comes to boundaries, I just want to kind of like pin yeah. that. Point. I love that distinction, yeah, because <laughs> because yeah, absolutely. Like it's if you're constantly work, make it, if you're constantly working to make the world just the way you need it to be, then you're never ever ever going to be free because the world. Will no, never, that's not ever. a real boundary. It's not <laughs> a real boundary. No, it's not. Real boundaries look like what you said, which is. I recognize when my body feels fluid and open and we want to do this. And I recognize when my body needs something a bit different and I can with love and compassion offer you the boundary and listen and be with the Mm. resistance that you might have to that. If I can't even tolerate hearing that you want it to be something different or that you're upset about the fact that I've blah, blah, blah. No, you're in a cage. Mm. you're not in a state of freedom. So just to recognise that fluid difference mm. in the boundaries that we're talking about versus the way that we might construct boundaries outside of this discussion. Yeah, that's a great distinction. And, of course, you know, when, you, when, you're, when you're feeling strong out or overtired or you've been up all night, then you'll also know that because of, you know, all of those things on your nervous system, your boundaries might be a lot less that day and that that's okay too and it requires softness not rigidity and harshness with your child but a slowing down enough for you to be able to meet both your needs and theirs without having to make somebody outside of you the enemy Mm. like you know deal with with that that you know achiness within you or that need for rest with you in a way that can still be loving of those around you even and that might look like no I'm not willing to play that with you right now I need to rest 
you know, and find a way to rest near them in, in, in a way that they feel okay with, but that your rest is still okay. And that can be just the safe boundary um, that keeps, you know, you safe and you cared for and them safe and them cared for. 100%. Mm. So if you feel desirous towards expanding exactly what it means to live in alignment, then Secret Source is our weekly workshop space that we're doing over the next four weeks in Soul Driven Motherhood. So I would really invite you to check that out on socials at Nourishing the Mother or nourishingmother.com.au is the website. So that has four modules we're going to walk you through in lives because Soul Driven Motherhood is the space for community discussion and weekly Mm -hmm. workshops to advance your practice. So it looks like we're going to do values next week, which Bridgie will lead. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because no one knows better than you. Lord (laughs) knows I like to just sit in in that conversation. And then we're doing, uh, what are we doing then? We're doing overwhelm. We're doing shadow work and feminine awakening Mm. work. Mm. So that looks like a really delicious space to be. So So please come and join us in Soul Driven Motherhood or you can purchase an individual session because they are going to be run via Zoom. So it's an interactive workshop. Mm. So you can find out any of that on our socials. So to connect with you, Bridget. com and you do is the pleasure nutritionist.com. Remember to nourish the woman to rock the family. And um, we'll see you next week when we continue to peel back the layers on your mothering journey. And if you want to support Nourishing the Mother and all the late nights, the early mornings, the blood, sweat and tears we pour into our art, then please go to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast and become our patron. As a patron, you're helping all of the cost of operating this podcast, the hosting, the editing, the transcription, helping all of that be completely covered and joining a community who are all about honouring our journeys and continuing to open. The more support we have, the longer we can last. So become a patron. We'd love to have you. Go to patreon.com forward slash NTM podcast. We literally couldn't do this without you. Thank you so much for listening and please share this podcast with anyone you think it would be medicine for. This has been a production of TheWellnessCouch.com. Check us out on Facebook and join in the conversation on Facebook.com forward slash TheWellnessCouch. Subscribe to each show on iTunes and check us out on Twitter. The Wellness Couch, streaming wellness into your lives. Whilst The Wellness Couch presenter endeavor to provide accurate and helpful information to their listeners, these podcasts cannot take into account individual circumstances and are not intended to be a substitute for health and medical advice from a qualified health professional. You should always seek the advice of a qualified health professional before acting on any of the information provided by any of The Wellness Couch podcasts.